Today we're going to be talking about Lagrange multipliers. Optimization is the process of finding either maximums or minimums. In calculus, we did this with one variable and we found critical points using derivatives. The critical points are where the slope equals zero. Now we're going to talk about constrained optimization. So we have the same green parabola that represents a function we want to optimize. But this time the circle is the constraint on the x and y. We want to find a minimum or a maximum of our function on the circle that is the constraint. The level curves indicate different function values for the parabola. The value at the yellow curve is 10, whereas the value at the green curve is 0. So the function increases downward, so the gradient points downward. The function x squared plus y squared also increases downwards at this point, so the gradient also points downwards. This means the gradients are parallel. I'm going to put it next to it so you can see. This means we can identify critical points by finding where the gradients are parallel. The technique that uses the fact that these gradients are proportional to each other is the Lagrange multiplier optimization technique. So for this technique, you need to solve a system of equations. Here's your first equation that says that the gradients of the function that you need to optimize and the constraint function are proportional. And here is the very second important equation that says the constraint function must be set to a constant. And both functions must use the same variables. The proportionality constant here is represented by the symbol lambda, and that is the Lagrange multiplier. Now we're going to take a look at a problem. We want to make a caramel of a volume of 10 centimeters cubed. We want one side length of the candy to be twice the length of the other. We want to minimize the surface area of the candy. So here is a picture representing this problem. So here we have our height h, our width x, and our length 2x. We can calculate the surface area for this caramel by adding up the surface area of all the faces, and it simplifies to this. Next we have our volume equation, which is our constraint equation, and then we can find that by multiplying the side lengths all together, and we know that it's equal to 10. Now here are the Lagrange multiplier equations, and then the versions that we will be using in this problem, specific to the slide that you saw previously. So now we have the gradient of the surface area is equal to a proportionality constant in the volume, and these parts represent those bits, or the x and the h derivatives. And now we have the constraint equation where the volume is set equal to 10. And now you have a system of equations that you can now solve, and this will give us the width of our candy, the height of our candy, and then using that information, we can find the length of our candy, and we can find the minimum surface area that we can create. We're going to look at Lagrange multiplier optimization with multiple constraints. So all of the constraint equations are added to the system of equations. So we have all these constraints, and then we have the main equation where it's the gradient of the function you want to optimize is proportional to the gradients of all of the constraint functions. And all the constraint functions are set equal to constants. There is an additional unique Lagrange multiplier for every constraint function that you add on. Now we're going to look at the same problem we saw previously. We still want to minimize the surface area, and we still want a volume of 10 centimeters cubed. But now we're looking at this restriction as a constraint. We can use this information to write another constraint function. Now here is our caramel again, and this time we have three variables. We have our width, our length, and our height. Here is our surface area function, our volume function, and you can see that they're now dependent on width, length, and height instead of x and h. Now we're adding on this new constraint function called d, and it's our second constraint. And we have to make sure we set it equal to a constant 
So instead of writing two width equals an, a length, we have to write it like this. So now we have our Lagrange multiplier equations and we have two constraints. So here's our main equation and here are our two constraint equations. So here we've got it set up for our problem where the gradient of the surface area is proportional to the gradient of the volume plus the gradient of our dimension constraint. And here we have our volume equation and our dimension equation, which are both our constraint equations specific to this problem. Now we can take a look at the gradient parts of the equation. So these are partial derivatives that we get from the gradient equation. So all of these three give us three equations for our system of equations. And now we can also look at the equations for the constraint functions. And right here you have the constraint function for the volume and the constraint function for the dimensions. You can then solve that system of equations for the variables that you're looking for, your width, your length, and your height. So you can do this with any tool that you want. You can use Mathematica, you can do this by hand. There's many methods you can use to solve system of equations. But here we will get the same answer that we got before, just in terms of individual variables instead of with x and h. But these will give you the same conclusion, and you can use all of these to find the minimum surface area. Thank, Thank you, you for, for watching! Bye! Goodbye! Goodbye. Goodbye.